Howdy folks. So a few years ago I did a review on an electric screwdriver that I got um, direct from China. It was one of the ones that was designed for use in their factories. And it was a decent electric screwdriver, uh, but it had a few flaws. Um, mainly the fact that when you laid it on its side, grease came out of it because it was not designed for that orientation. It was corded, which made it a little bit of a hassle. And the biggest problem for me was that it it uh, required special bits. And, I, and so basically, you know, if, if what I was trying to unscrew wasn't Phillips, then it really um, wasn't wasn't very useful. And anyway, the one of the wires in the, the cable um, snapped, and so I decided to look into a different screwdriver. And so uh, a few months ago, I picked up um, one of these uh, electric screwdrivers, and I'm not giving an exact brand or make or model because uh, there are a bunch of these. If you look on eBay or Amazon or any of those major retailers, you'll find these. They all look the same. Um, they're sold by a bunch of different brands in a bunch of different kits. Some come with bits, some don't. Um, and there's a few differences. Some of them have um, this light at the top that tells you whether it's charging or not. Um, it looks like it's multiple lights, but it's not. Uh, it's just a single light because um, there's a USB port on the end. Some of them have this and some of them don't. But realistically, other than that, they're basically all identical. And um, this one, as you can see, it's already uh, been taken apart a little bit. There's a, um, there's a, of course, the button button piece goes on here. And uh, the reason why this is apart is because uh, it has broken. Um, so for the three months or so that I had this, um, it was great. I mean, I used this every day and it was, you know, I was really thinking this was going to be, you know, this was going to be the electric screwdriver for me. Um, because it's, it's small, it's lightweight, you know, it, it, the one that I, the kit that I got has, has all, a lot of bits, um, but it uses the same, the same small hex. Um, I don't know exactly what this is called, but this is, this is not the, the normal size hex, it's the smaller one. Um, and it, 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 it's fast enough to be useful. Uh, it's not as fast as the, the, the one I had previously, um, but it was still decently fast, and it doesn't have a clutch, but because it's, it's smooth, um, you, you kind of get used to um, letting it slip in your hand um, as you basically you use you use this as, as as the clutch you basically do it manually by how much grip you put on it and it was really good and I, I, I like this a lot and one of the concerns that I had was um, in a lot of the reviews they basically say yeah you know it, it broke on me after a few weeks or whatever and uh, yeah that that's what happened to, to mine um, you know I was just using it and uh, all of a sudden you know I hear a big pop and it, it became instantaneously clear to me that one of the gears in the gearbox um, exploded um, because it, it just makes horrible grinding noises and the, the end sometimes doesn't spin and sometimes it does. And um, so, yeah, unfortunately, the, the gears in this appear, it appears to be a systemic problem where they're kind of cheese grade. And um, so I thought I would take this apart. Um, I, I, I just had to figure out how to get it apart. I wanted to do that off, that off camera because it wasn't obvious. Um, as it turns out, I tried to take off the end cap. Turns out you have to pry off the buttons and there's a screw here and there's two pieces um, that go in from each end and they link together with this screw. So that's how you, you get this apart if you want to do it yourself. But I haven't gone any further, so I thought I'd do that live on camera. Uh, we can take a look at what's inside of this. Um, do I recommend it? Um, Honestly, if you do exclusively tiny screw work, so if you're working on, you know, like electronics, you know, you're, you're repairing phones or, 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 you know, things that require very small screws, um, it's probably still okay. But the problem is it, you can literally, it can apply more torque than the gears inside can handle. Um, and for that reason, and just due to the price, this is not a cheap thing. I think they're like 50 bucks or so, um... And so for that, I, I, have a, I have a difficulty recommending this. So I'm going to post a video right after this one uh, where, I, where I review the replacement that I've bought to replace this, which is a different class of tool. Um, so uh, be sure to check that video out as well because um, I'll do a review on that and a teardown on that one as well. But let's get this apart. So like I said, there's, there's, there's a screw in here, and I've left this together, so um, I can actually push these buttons, and you can see what the problem is here. So the lights still work, obviously. But you can see the end, it, uh, it sort of spins sometimes, but doesn't. It's not spinning right now. And if you kind of help it along, yeah, no, it's, it's not doing anything at this point. So there's, there's no connection between the motor and the end anymore. Uh, and I suspect um, we'll find some metal shavings in there. So you pull it apart, and there are two halves in this metal tube. Um, 
And the construction's actually not that not that bad. Let's see if we can get this part. Here we go. So yeah, so it's just a metal tube. Um, nothing special in there. Um, yeah, absolutely nothing. Nothing fancy in there at all. There's a little uh, little light pipe that's broken, which is yeah. There's a little light pipe which used to be up here um, that fell out. And so let's look at this end first. So this is clearly the battery and charging end. Um, and so the way that they're doing this, um, it took me a little while to, to kind of notice this at first. So this tab, which is what the screw goes through, this is actually the positive. And then this tab on the other side here is the negative. And so they're actually using the case, um, this aluminum case, as the, uh, the conductor that takes the negative, the common, from this side, um, this module to this module. And then there's a contact in here that joins these two together. So... Uh, this doesn't appear to have any screws in it, so let's just pry it apart and see if it comes apart. Uh, so this is a piece of paper. Um, so this looks like it's a, just a diffuser, because like I said, um, even though it looks like it would be, you know, multiple LEDs to tell you what the charge is, it's just um, a white LED to tell you it's charging in a blue, or a blue LED to tell you it's charging and a white LED to tell you it's charged or whatever. Um, it's just two colors, that's all. Um, and, okay, so this is a part, um, can I get that terminal out? Yes, I can, okay, so, get that out of the way. So, we have a cell in here, uh, this is an inter interesting cell because it's got both the connections on one side, so it almost looks like a capacitor, but it's not. Um, I'm going to butcher the name, uh, Huahui New Energy. Um, NSC series lithium-ion battery, 3.7 volts, uh, and some patent stuff, and website, whatever. Uh, I don't see any capacity in milliamp hours on here. Um, doesn't, does not say, so I don't know, but forbid, der forbid burn and damage the battery. So, you take that with what you will. So, and then on the back here, we have a little battery board. Out completely, um, not much on here. Not not uh, not that I'd expect much. Uh, small chip uh, markings four o five six e six six nine one d. I'm not going to bother to look those up. Um, it's just going to be a very simple uh, battery uh, lithium charge controller. Um, it's got two LED outputs, and that's it. Uh, nothing fancy. Um, and does it even have? So the battery positive is directly connected to the tab, and the negative is also directly connected. So the battery is directly connected to the screwdriver, um, so it does not look like it has any under voltage protection. So I think you, it, it is possible for you to probably run this battery down below 3 volts. Um, this only looks like overcharge protection, um, if I'm seeing that right, because there's no MOSFETs to switch um, the load off. So... Uh, I guess keep in mind the battery's state of charge. I never managed to run this thing down all the way. Um, you know, that's... that's I, I charged it up every once in a while just so that I, I didn't have that problem. And so this is the uh, the power pack here, and you can already kind of see, uh, if you look in here, there's some gearing down in here. So um, that's really what I'd like to take a look at. And uh, so the buttons are in here, so I expect there's going to be some... Um, either an H bridge or realistically, I think the H bridge is going to be probably implemented with the with just regular switches. I don't see why you would bother to put FETs in here because there's two separate buttons. But let's see. I, I expect when I open this, it's going to just sp sproing everywhere, and that gearbox is just going to go. All the gears are going to go everywhere. Okay, so this is the side that comes off. Okay, so there's some more stuff on here. So maybe there actually is under voltage protection, but it's implemented on this side. That would be interesting. So, we have another IC here. And it's got some grease on it. So, it appears to be MX612E and then looks like the date code 1922H. Um, so again, I'm not going to look that up, but just by looking at it, uh, I would say that's, you know, we've got two transistors on here, 
and that chip. So that's very possible that that is, that is the battery uh, protection I see. But again, I'm, I'm not going to bother to look that up. Uh, someone else can uh, do that if they want. Um, it's not too exciting. So we've got some really, really thin leads running down here to just a little tiny ring PCB on the end. It's got those three white LEDs, um, which honestly actually work very well. They're, they're unlike, unlike a lot of them, the, the LEDs are very close and in plane with uh, what you're screwing. So with a lot, of, a lot of drills and stuff, the LEDs are you know, way down on the handle. So they, they shine way below where you're actually working. So this actually worked very well. Um, it, 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 it sort of renewed my faith in um, you know, LEDs being useful on, on tools like this. So it almost looks like there's two stages here. Because um, there's this and then there's the gear gearbox that's open that we can see. Okay, so, so we've got uh, this piece here, and so this, this looks like a clutch. Interesting. I was not expecting a clutch, and I've kind of borked it, but, yep, yep, that was a clutch. Um, so, yeah, so there are these little, um, oh boy, they're going everywhere. They're, they they kind of stuck to it because this is a, a magnetic end that holds the bits in, but there are these small metal cylinders which have now gone all over my desk. There's, um, I can see at least three of them, and I think there's one still stuck on here. Yeah, so there's at least four of them, and one of them's probably in my keyboard, but these are little, um, little paws, and makes this a, a clutch. So the idea is you've got this, uh, this sort of keyed input here, and when you turn this, um, given how, so let's just put this in here. So those, those rollers would allow you, um, through this, it would lock up um, in one direction um, and then lock up in the other direction. I think so, so really I think this is, this is designed to allow you to basically um, apply force manually. So if, if you apply force externally, um, those, those um, rollers, they, they bind up in here and they allow you to transfer torque through the case, through probably these wings into the bit. Um, so you don't put manual force on the, the little gears in here. Um, but when you turn the inside, then those rollers move, they slip, and then the, 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 you know, they can transfer uh, power directly from the motor. Um, it's probably not a great explanation, but I'm not a mechanical guy, you know that. So anyway, um, so this is the gearbox. So I, I thought there was something hidden in there, but I guess no. So that means, I, well, actually, I can already see this. Um, you can see right here, these are little metal bits, and uh, those are not supposed to be there. Those little teeny tiny magnetic metal bits. Um, I can tell you that's what's left of a gear or gear teeth um, that used to be in here. And so I should be able to see which gear, um, which gear is destroyed. So this last, I think, I think I can see it. I think it's, I think it's this, this gear right here. Oh, framing. I think it's this gear right here. So this big portion and there's this little portion here. And so you can kind of see on the bottom for these little nubs where the rest of the teeth used to be. Because when I turn the end, it, it does, it, it kind of wants to bind into this, but there's no teeth left. Um, there's just kind of marks of where the teeth were. So I think that's the, uh, that's, that's the failure because I can turn the motor and everything else seems to turn okay. Um, so I think that that is, in this case, that's the gear that failed. Uh, it's kind of, kind of sucks. I can actually, I can actually, um, open this up. Let's, let's do that. Let me get a screwdriver. 
the irony of using a screwdriver to take apart another screwdriver. Honestly, the this this screwdriver set is one of the best ones. Um, it's it's from E Durable, I think. Um, if I can find it on Amazon, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. It's um, it's really good. Um, it's you know, it's the 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 screwdriver set that was only like twenty bucks, but it has every bit I ever need in it, and all my expensive sets don't have bits in it. So uh, the bits you need, so, but that one always has the right bits and stuff. So it's. Uh, Become it's been very handy. So there's a little motor, little little teeny tiny output shaft on that. Everything's very small. So I apologize if the framing is not good and it's not in focus and all that. So this doesn't appear to come. Up, it's not coming apart. So those screws were just holding the motor on. Like this does not want to come apart. So I wonder if this is press fit somehow. Um, like these collars. Yeah. Look, there's more more little bits of teeth in here. Yeah. So, so it, it, it's unfortunate that it can apply enough torque. And it makes sense because it that gear makes sense because it's the, literally it's the gear right on the output. So that's the, the part where you have the most torque. And it's it's kind of unfortunate because you look at the gears and they're really, you know, the, the teeth pitch and every, the, the, everything's basically the same as you, as you go. Um, like the gears don't necessarily get more beefy as you, as you go from high speed, you know, low torque to, uh, low, high torque, low speed. Um, and so if they had, if they had just beefed up the output stage, um, it wouldn't, uh, probably wouldn't have died. And I can't tell, I mean, they're probably powdered metal, maybe, or maybe they're machined. Now that I look at them, it looks like they are machined because... I don't know how you would make powdered metal that small, so maybe they are machined. But anyway, there's really no point. This isn't repairable, so that's what's inside one of these. Um, you know, it's a little battery, which is, uh, un unfortunately, I don't know what the actual capacity is, so that's not terribly useful. Um, yeah, you know, there's some charge circuitry here, and there's a little little H-bridge, um, you know, with some buttons and stuff on this. Uh, but unfortunately, there's not really anything I can do about this. This is going to be kind of you know, save the little bits and then the rest of it's all gonna go in the trash. So that's what's, that's what's inside one of these. And, uh, this gearbox is the weak point. So, you know, to be honest, I still recommend this, but it's one of those things where, you know, if you work on like watches or smartphones or something, and you know, the screws that you're taking out are like no larger than that, then this is probably fine. But, um, you know, even though it comes with bits that will, you know, happily, you know, undo bigger screws. Um, I think as soon as you do that, you, you've, you've entered the danger zone and, you know, it's also very possible that the clutch, you know, w didn't, didn't work properly, uh, or didn't, didn't act fast enough, um, to save the, the motor or, or, or to save the gearbox. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, that's what's inside. So to be honest, I still recommend it, but only for a very specific use case. Otherwise I, I would recommend something bigger. So, um, that's what I'll take a look at in my next video. So, till next time, thanks for watching.